Did you know that every male on Earth begins life as a female? The Y chromosome, which is responsible for the development of a fetus into a male, is inactive for the first five weeks, and the embryo develops into a female. Starting with the sixth week, when the Y chromosome comes into play, everything changes. The body of a future man is formed with certain peculiarities dictated by evolution. For example, men have big noses because they consume more oxygen. They also have fewer pain receptors, which makes them more resilient. The peculiarities of the male body and psyche are essential for survival, finding a mate, group interaction, and producing healthy offspring. And achieving success in all of these areas makes him a champion, both in primitive times and now. But why did evolution make men simpler? Is it true that the larger the feet, the larger the penis? What? Who's the fastest to escape from a disaster, a mouse or a man? And can we call a man the coolest male on the planet? A cool male is primarily a strong and intimidating hunter. But what does a man have for hunting if you take away his weapons and cars? A man has strong bones. And the more a man trains or takes part in sports activities, the stronger and more massive his skeletal system becomes. Female bones are constructed differently and become fragile over time. Also, a man can exhibit a high level of aggression. It depends on the amount of the testosterone hormone in his body. Mostly, testosterone levels are about 20 times higher in men than in women. There's also an inverse relationship. Scientists from Nipissing University in Canada discovered that aggressive actions increase testosterone levels in the blood. Testosterone is also responsible for the formation of new blood cells in a man's body. Therefore, male blood contains more hemoglobin and red blood cells. In addition, men are great runners. Male legs have 80% more muscle than female legs, and their heart and lungs supply more oxygen, which helps men run faster. However, hundreds of healthy adult men have ended up as Gustav's easily caught dinner. Gustav is a man-eating Nile crocodile from Burundi. Rumor has it that Gustav has killed about 300 people. Nobody's ever managed to catch him. And nobody's managed to kill him as bullets simply bounce off his thick skin. By the way, the thickness of human male skin is only 2 millimeters. That's 0.2 millimeters thicker than women's, and one-tenth as sensitive. But it's nothing compared to a crocodile's armor. So, while super predators like Gustav walk the Earth, you'd hardly call man the coolest hunter. He has little choice but to fear and avoid the threat. But how well do men sense danger? Many animals can sense the approach not only of predators, but even of natural disasters. The most sensitive barometers of an impending earthquake are mice. They sense danger 15 days before it strikes. Fish and snakes sense the danger 10 days prior. Dogs and hens 10 days before it actually happens. Cats, both wild and domestic, sense the danger a few hours before it strikes. But people aren't capable of anything like that, especially men. Even a direct threat is much less recognized by them. It's all because of a low concentration of the estradiol, progesterone, and cortisol hormones, which are responsible for stress. Of course, it explains why men are kind of fearless. But foolish and reckless actions can also be dictated by this peculiarity. Moreover, men's ears are not very receptive to high-frequency sounds, and that's why some audible warnings fail to reach the male brain. It stems from quirks in a male's central nervous system, as well as from the fact that men are genetically much simpler. That's because to prevent serious conflicts with the X chromosome, the male Y chromosome has to shut down a variety of genes that currently don't encode any proteins. During the 300 million years of a continuous arms race with the X chromosome, 
the Y chromosome has lost 1,393 genes out of an initial 1,438 genes. That's over 96%. For the same reason, men are less adept at distinguishing among shades. On top of that, the effects of testosterone cause the male brain to receive and process signals from the organs of sight in a different way than from a female's. Thus, even a rabbit surpasses a man in threat recognition. A rabbit has a very wide visual field and remarkably strong legs. Additionally, rabbits reproduce at an astonishing rate, helping to keep up the number of offspring. That makes men somewhat similar to rabbits. They think about sex every seven minutes, don't they? Here comes the first myth about the male body. Yeah, men think about sex more often than women, but they think about food and rest no less frequently. Therefore, a man's horniness is a myth, just like the fact that the size of a penis equals the size of a foot. The truth is, the development of the penis and toes is influenced by the same gene, but there's no correlation in their size. British scientists analyzed the data of 15,000 men and concluded that neither foot size, nor finger length, nor body mass index, nor age, nor testicle size correlate with the size of the penis. Otherwise, a similar correlation would be found in other males. For example, a horse, owing to the size of its penis, would have long hooves. In addition, the male's sexual organ can have one of two states which influences its size. Sometimes a man with a small one becomes <clears throat> much more impressive when it comes to the crucial moment. One study found that out of 2,770 men with small members, their flaccid penises lengthen at erection by 86% while the guys with the larger penises experienced lengthening of only 47%. But when it comes to a measuring contest, the blue whale surpasses everyone. The size of its sexual organ is 10% of its entire body. It's about 3 meters long. However, size has no role to play in impregnation. And it's even less important in issues related to the care of offspring. The more important question, can a male take on the female's role in mothering? Half it got away from us. Daddy! Um, Chris. Some males in the wild take care of their cubs just like females. Male penguins incubate penguin eggs for months, and male seahorses are even able to give birth. Regarding human beings, only a woman can carry and then breastfeed a baby. Or maybe not. The French press reported that a 30-year-old Sri Lankan man breastfed two babies after his wife died. Similar cases have been reported by eyewitnesses in South American tribes. The thing is that men, like women, do have mammary glands that can produce breast milk. That's why men also have nipples. The glands just aren't active in men, and the nipples are considered to be simply rudimentary organs, ones that no longer function due to their uselessness. But the amount of prolactin, or lactation-inducing protein, can increase in a male body due to starvation or nipple stimulation. Accordingly, some men are able to breastfeed their babies. And that's not all. It turns out that men also suffer from premenstrual syndrome. 26% of men regularly experience various symptoms, ranging from pain in their lower abdomen to increased food cravings. It's most likely the result of reduced testosterone concentrations in these males' bodies. And just like women, on those occasions they become irritable and hypersensitive. But still, a man will never be able to give birth to a baby. And a seahorse can give birth to thousands of babies. And that's admirable. But did man manage to become the coolest male? The answer lies in a riddle. Who can sense danger worse than a mouse? Who can easily become a crocodile's dinner? Whose penis loses in a size contest with a whale? And who can never give its children what a seahorse can give? The correct answer is a horse. But a human male also just simply isn't as cool as he claims to be. 
especially if you take away all of his technological advantages. So, to improve yourself, subscribe to the channel, learn more, and get cooler.